Welcome back to the channel guys. In my video yesterday, I talked about the Chase Trifecta setup. If you're interested in comparing Trifecta setups, definitely go watch that. But in today's video, we're going to do a deep dive and explore the math behind the Amex Trifecta. Is it worth the extremely high annual fee of $800 a year? There's a couple different versions of the Amex Trifecta. It usually includes the Platinum card, the Gold card, and then either the Everyday Preferred card or the Blue Business Plus. I'm gonna make the argument that you should not be using the regular uh, Platinum card. There's no reason not to have the Charles Schwab version. In order to get the Charles Schwab version, you just need to open a checking and brokerage account with Charles Schwab. However, there's no minimum deposit. There's no fees associated. It's an entirely free account to get. And the Charles Schwab version has all the same uh, uh, credits, perks, bonuses, except you get the additional power of transferring out your Amex reward points at a rate of 1.25 cents into your Charles Schwab brokerage account. Having that additional ability, there's no reason to get, in my opinion, the normal platinum and hold it long term. You're better off with the Charles Schwab version. Additionally, in this video, I don't care about sign-up bonuses. You don't have to do any complicated math to know that in the first year, yes, you're going to get great value from a $1,000 sign-up bonus, However, I want to know what is the value, the true worth of the Amex Trifecta in years two, three, four, five. Is this a good strategy for you to be using long term? Other credit card YouTubers also don't talk about credit cards correctly in my opinion. They always speak of the break even point. How much do you need to spend on these cards in order to get back your annual fee? That is not the proper way to talk about credit cards. When you use your Amex Gold to purchase either groceries or dining, you are foregoing an opportunity cost of using, a, for example, a no annual fee cash back card. Whenever you evaluate what worth am I getting from this credit card setup that has annual fees, you need to take into effect, well, would I have been better off getting just cash back with a no annual fee credit card? So I've created my own no annual fee cash back trifecta. I call it the double blue propel trifecta. I don't think that's gonna catch on. And this no annual fee cash back trifecta includes the city double cash, which earns you 2% cash back on everything regardless of category. The Amex blue card, which earns you 3% cash back on all groceries. And then the Wells Fargo propel card. And the Wells Fargo propel card earns you the equivalent of 3% cash back on eating out, ordering in, gas stations, ride shares, transit, flights, hotels, homestays, car rentals, and popular streaming services. In previous videos, I've talked about my favorite no annual fee cashback credit cards. Your spending habits might dictate that you use different cards. If you're a Prime member, I would use the uh, Amazon Prime card for 5% cashback. If you shop at Target, the Target Red card gives you 5% off. But for the purposes of simplicity, we're just gonna go with the Blue Everyday card, the Wells Fargo Propel, and the City Double Cash. Next, we need to create a fake budget, and let's assume that these are some categories where we're using average numbers. These are numbers comparable to what I think I spend in a year. So I spend about 300 a month on dining, 300 a month on groceries, 480 a year on streaming, 3000 on online shopping, 3000 on travel, and about $30 a week on gas. Additionally, there's this other category where I'm gonna say 5000, and this is usually a huge chunk of your spending, and it can include home remodeling costs, furniture, clothing, healthcare, other home bills, tuition perhaps. And we're gonna say that in a year, on your credit cards, you can spend about $20,000. So let's plug in our no annual fee cash back trifecta, and I would expect to save on $20,000 worth of spend about $557. The question now is, using the Amex trifecta, can I get more value while paying $800 in annual fees than the no annual fee cashback trifecta? First thing you have to decide with your trifecta is if you wanna use the Amex Everyday Preferred Credit Card or the Blue Business Plus Credit Card. The, the problem with these two is uh, for the Blue Business Plus, you have to say that you have a business. 
and you can watch other YouTube videos explaining how to get business credit cards. It's not that hard. Literally, if you sell anything on eBay or have any kind of side hustle, you can count that as a business and you're qualified for a business credit card. The reason why I don't like the Amex Everyday Preferred credit card is because it is an additional $95. You also have to complete 30 individual transactions on this card in order to get the 50% point boost. If you were to do 30 individual transactions in a month, your 3x multiplier on supermarkets becomes 4.5, your gas station goes from 2 to 3, and your everything else goes from 1 to 1.5. But the Blue Business Plus credit card is a no annual fee credit card, and it just earns you 2x membership reward points across the board on everything up to $50,000 in a year. If we plug the Blue Business Plus version of the trifecta, once again with the Charles Schwab Platinum card, into our fake budget, on $20,000 worth of spend, I can expect to get about 57,800 Amex reward points. When we substitute for the Amex preferred card, it actually gets worse. You don't earn, at least in my fake budget, you don't earn as many points as the Blue Business card. So I, I got 57,880 with the Blue Business version of the trifecta and only 56,000 with the Everyday Preferred. Plus the Amex Everyday Preferred, you have to factor in an additional $95 to your annual fees. So this version of the trifecta is just worse by about $100. So for the rest of this video, I am gonna proceed with assuming that you're gonna get the Blue Business Plus card. Otherwise, just go ahead and subtract $100 from all the final math in the video. So what is 57,800 Amex reward points worth? Well, if you go for gift cards or cash back in a statement on the uh, Amex portal, it'll give you a rate of about 0.006. So 57,800 points is worth about $500. Amex claims that if you use the points for portal redemption, you're getting one cent per point. That would give you a value of 578. I actually think the Amex portal for booking hotels and flights is trash. Don't use it. But let's assume that one cent per point is the best you can do with gift cards. The next option you have is to transfer out your 57,000 points to your Charles Schwab brokerage account at a rate of 1.25 cents per point. That would give you a value of $700. In case you're not aware, if it goes to your brokerage account, it doesn't have to stay there. You can transfer it to a savings or checking account and it's just cash. You can do whatever you want with it. The next option you have for your points is to use transfer partners. This is where you traditionally get the most value with Amex reward points is when you transfer it to partners like Hilton, Marriott, Bonvoy, or Delta. And I'm just gonna go ahead and say, potentially you can get about two cents per point when properly using transfer partners, if you know how to do that. So when comparing these values to our no annual fee trifecta, they're looking pretty good. However, we have not subtracted that $800 in annual fees and holy cow, the uh, no annual fee cashback trifecta is now beating every scenario uh, with the Amex trifecta. But don't worry because we have a bunch of crazy weird credits that we need to factor in and that will change our final numbers. First credit we gotta talk about is the Amex Gold $10 a month dining credits. You can use it at a bunch of random places like Cheesecake Factory or Shake Shack. The most useful one is Seamless or Grubhub. It's a food delivery service, but if you switch it to pickup, then you're no longer paying a delivery fee. I don't like this credit because it's $10 a month and it's use or lose. So you might forget to use it one month or potentially you're ordering food that's a little bit more expensive than you would have paid for otherwise and you're overspending without even realizing it. So I'm gonna discount this credit and not say it's worth the full 120. You can do whatever you want with your math, but I personally am gonna value this at $100. So let's add in $100 and the column on the right is now our new totals for our different ways of uh, redeeming the Amex reward points. Next credit we have to factor in is the Uber credits. This is $15 a month and then in December it's like 35. 200 for the year, once again, use or lose. I don't like that. So potentially you could forget to use it some month. Additionally, Uber is not available everywhere. For example, I live in North Dakota and I don't have access to Uber. Uber also doesn't let you use these credits when you're traveling abroad. I took a trip to Toronto and I was really excited to use my Uber credit and you can't use your Uber credit when traveling abroad, so nuts. 
But when using the Uber Eats app, it actually is fairly easy to use this credit. So I'm gonna discount it only $30 and say it has to me a value of about 170. We'll add in that 170 and on the column on the right is our new totals. Next credit is the Saks Fifth Avenue credit on the Amex Platinum card and this gives you a $50 credit for the first six months of the year, January through June, and then another $50 credit from July to December. I don't think anybody is too happy or excited about this credit. I'm gonna use it. Uh, I made a video on my channel how to use it by just going on their website basically. But I only value this at about $20 each use. Because in my opinion, I'm purchasing something off their website that I don't want and that's overpriced. And most likely I'm just gonna use it as a birthday or a holiday gift for a family or friend. So I would only value that at $20 each. So we're gonna say this is worth to me $40 for the year. Next, let's factor in Amex's lounge network. When you hold the platinum card, you get priority pass select and access to American Express's lounge network. This includes the Centurion lounges. If you fly in and out an airport that has one, you get access to the Escape lounges and the Delta SkyMile lounges when flying with Delta. If you saw my Chase Trifecta video, I only value this at about $60 just because it's Priority Pass Select. Because American Express has a larger network of lounges, I'm gonna go ahead and value this a lot higher. Additionally, if you are traveling with other people, you can bring them into the Centurion Lounge. So I personally am gonna value this at $120 a year. Next, we have the airline incidental fee credit, and this is $100 on the gold card and $200 on the platinum card for a total of $300. And this airline incidental fee credit is infuriating. You used to be able to buy gift cards with certain airlines that would trigger the credit. Amex shut that shut this down. So it's it's really hard to use this credit for most people. Obviously, there are some people that use it for seat upgrades and checked bags. But if you're just spending it to spend it, i.e. buying lounge access you wouldn't have paid for otherwise, or buying food and drink on planes that you weren't gonna spend otherwise, then you're not getting true value. You're wasting your own money. So I am only gonna value this $300 combined credit at about $100. The next thing with the Amex trifecta that I put value on is gold status with Hilton Hotels and Resorts and Marriott Bonvoy. When you have gold status, you can potentially get room upgrades. You get other perks associated like early check-in, late check-out, but you also get free breakfast. And to me, this is a great value if you and one other person are traveling you don't have to go out to eat in the morning. If you can value that at $15 a person and you only stay in Hilton or Marriott properties twice a year, I'm personally gonna value this at $60. Having gold status also gives you a better multiplier when staying with at their properties. So you actually do earn more points in their point network by holding gold status. Other intangibles that you have to personally factor in yourself is what value do you put on the other perks associated with the platinum card? car rental status, the global entry TSA pre-check, the global lounge collection, the fine hotel and resorts credit, shop runner, baggage insurance, car rental loss, damage insurance. It's up to you if you value those and if they increase the worth at all to you. So when we look at our options of either cashback, portal, or Charles Schwab, you're losing out to the no annual fee cashback trifecta that I created. You're only getting ahead if you're using your points for transfer partners to either Delta or maybe an, another airline, and then you're getting really high redemption rates. And for me, what I think is going on here is that American Express has deliberately designed a high risk, high reward credit card system where if you're willing to pay, play by their rules, i.e. use this use or lose $10 a month dining credit, $15 a month use or lose Uber credit, $50, $50 SACS credit every six month, and then single airline select $100 airline credit, $200 single select airline credit. This is $720 in credit. If you play by their rules and do everything they tell you to do, then yeah, you'll get expected value. But most people, I mean, life is complicated, you're busy. Uh, I think a lot of people who get these cards think to themselves, yeah, I'll, I'll do this, and then they just don't do it. So there's this sliding scale of risk and reward. Let's say that uh, I'm in the middle and I'm Marvin the Martian. These are kind of what I would value all of those credits and then what I would get depending on how I use my points. 
But let's say that you're super gung-ho, you're gonna use all $720 of these credits, then you're like Bugs Bunny. And if you were to take these different redemption routes, these are the full value you would get if you're playing by Amex's rules and using all the credits how they say they use it. But what if you're Daffy Duck? You know, you use the card for lounge access, you use it for hotel status, you're still, you're still getting the value from the perks that I factored in, but you're just blowing off the credits. You say, these are too hard to use, I can't keep track of these, I don't wanna keep track of these. If you blow off the credits, which I think Amex is counting on most people doing, then you're at a huge loss. You would have been way better off with a no annual fee uh, cashback setup. So my final thoughts is that if you don't use these credits, if you don't value these credits that they force on you for your annual fees, then for probably the, the majority of people, you're losing money. Unless you're really good with transferring points out to Delta or other transfer partners, and you're getting these amazing redemption rates, and you, you know if you're doing that or not, then you're probably worse off. The vast majority of people in all of these scenarios under Marvin the Martian and Daffy Duck, you're losing out. You would have been better off just getting a no annual fee cashback trifecta. So is the Amex trifecta worth $800 a year? You know, there's a lot of intangibles associated with American Express. I really do like them. They have fantastic customer service. Uh, I have six cards. It's really easy to keep track of them all and pay my bills on their website. Their website is fantastic. Additionally, Amex has great sign-up bonuses. You know, cycling through their cards to just get their fantastic sign-up bonuses is a good option. But once again, sign-up bonuses to me, that's, that's only valuable in the first year. Is this trifecta good for you year to year is the question I'm trying to answer. Amex also doesn't restrict people who are above Chase's 524 rule, so you can usually get quite a few cards pretty fast with American Express. And I just think that their branding, you know, the quality of the cards and how they feel and, you know, it, it does have an intangible value to it. Like it's fun to use these cards. The cons is that American Express is difficult to use while traveling abroad. It's not widely accepted. Additionally, there's no downgrade paths. And I feel like this is deliberate. You know, there's no way to transfer your credit history with the Amex Platinum card and the Amex Gold card to no annual fee cards in order to keep your credit score intact. And I feel like this is deliberate. I feel like Amex wants you to get these cards and then they wanna trap you a little bit because there's no way out. There's no way to downgrade and then keep the card at a no annual fee. So which would I recommend, the Amex trifecta or the Chase trifecta? If you watched my last video, I was honestly more impressed with the Chase trifecta and I, I, I don't need to make a separate video on this. I think that if you know what you're doing and you're a professional at earning your points and using your points, definitely go with Amex. It's high risk, high reward. However, if you're just an everyday spender that wants a simplified card setup and you don't want as much risk when using your cards, you're probably better off with Chase. Okay guys, that's all I got for you today. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. In addition, if you have any comments or thoughts, let me know. I love hearing from you guys. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. I got more credit card videos coming in the future. And until the next one, take care.